Oh, hey, YouTube. Day three of flying here at the Nationals. Oh, there's Charlie. We're sitting around waiting to launch into very windy. There's 10 or 15 knots of wind today and lots of clouds overdeveloping in places, but we should be able to get under these and stay up to start the task. And then we're heading that way into the blue yonder. Well, actually, we'll follow those cloud streaks probably. I'll probably try and get onto Tahara to get started, make sure I can stay up, and there's good thermals on the other side of it. We'll see how we go. Yesterday was good, came third. All out with Oscar Papa. Oh, it's going to be bumpy. Woo, look at that crosswind. Lovely. There we go. I wanted to get under this line of cloud here. Oh, that was a terrible way to turn. Holy bazooka, look at the wind around here. 28 ounce of wind. Duck. I need to get out of here quick. That was so tight, so quickly. 500 feet, just lost, just like that. Centennial Trevor, Glider Golf Oscar Pavar, overhead the field shortly, we'll be doing an engine relight. Well, we've been struggling to get started here at Centennial Park. There's 20 to 30 knots of wind blowing through over the plateau here. I'm climbing up in the lee of Mount Tahara, which there's been a nice line off it all day. So I came over here and I've got into the line of energy here and now I'm going up like a rocket. The wind's wrapping around the mountain just here. It's a conical mountain and then it creates a line of um, cues in behind it. Basically a little convergence with itself. So the wind's wrapped because of the wind wrapping around hitting itself again. Whoops, it's all it's quite gusty and turbulent. Alright, making an attempt here to get into the wave from Tahara. Up we go. Hopefully there's a bit of rotor cumulus here. Now oh, if we get another 1500 feet. I just want enough to get out of the area essentially. I keep stalling because it's so gusty and turbulent. Oh yeah, here we go. Right, climbed to six and a half, or just under, so I don't infringe the um, height limits for the contest. And then we've got to figure out how to get over to the start line. Well, it's a tough day. Currently, I'm only, I can see the glider base just there, but Oh, I've been struggling under these clouds. I didn't use my uh, wave start very well. I should have just come this direction in the beginning, but I meandered around trying to figure out which way to go. Anyway, I'm just climbing up here to jump over to Titi Rapanga, this little mountain here with a knob on top. And I'll be up to, there's some good looking clouds there, but I just want to make sure I get there. Well, I don't have much luck on Titi Rapanga. I went on to the wrong cloud. I should have gone to the one at the front that was forming. I went to one in the middle and it was falling apart. But arrived on this little line here and this is going up fast. Solid four and a half knots all the way around. Happy with this. We've got good clouds ahead and good. This is a good line here. It'll be, it'll be buoyant. This is all a touch low for my liking. Come on, one of these has to be climbing along here somewhere. Oh, you see where you go. Yep, there it is. There's an airstrip just there. Always good to have bailout options. So we managed to climb up well there. That was good. Got to the top of the turn point, pushed out to this last cloud out in the distance because it looked pretty solid, and uh, climbed up there. Then when I turned around, watch all the clouds there and see how they disappear. I've edited out the thermaling just so you don't get sick while I'm um, 
and you watch these clouds poof they just sort of start vanishing and even this one I'm about to head to looks good but then when I get there it starts fading out and I just don't get as high as I want here's this little line of clouds here this worked pretty well and I was able to climb up here hard to see it with the high cloud above pushed back out to Titiraupanga nearly got a I should have stopped here got a good climb in the lee of the hill but then pushed on foolishly thinking it'll be good on the other side and it wasn't and I still hadn't touched the circle at the bottom here so I had to scrape along the hill just trying to stay up in these little scraps of cloud and then I had to get back to these good looking clouds and once we got there you could see it was in a relatively easy run back to the airfield but it took a while to find a climb to get into that there we go now it's a nice easy ride home you can see uh, Mount Tahara there in the distance that is you see creating this line of cloud that we're uh, trekking along now and it's just the wind wrapping around that hill creating this line of energy yeah, it was a nice easy glide into the airfield we got home that was a big relief and a tough day yeah I don't know how many other people got around but I know a lot of people started their engines or landed out look at these beautiful views it's 20 knots of wind but luckily it all streeted up really nicely on the way home so Centennial Oscar uh, now downwind zero seven there's always a bit of sinking air at the end of the airfield here because of the hill so we're gonna we're gonna come down not go too far downwind I'm not even using any brake right now and I'm still coming down at six knots <laughs> I thought that might be the case let's speed up a bit let's see there's at least uh, 10 12 knots of wind down there there we go nice and high it always side slip to come down a bit faster if we need to like so yes I don't mind having lots of extra height on here got trees to clear and things Very good. Belly hook, it doesn't go in far. YouTube. So today we've got a nice relatively blue day with occasional clouds and it should be a ripper with cloud bases up to 7,000 feet later. Near cloud base waiting for, well I really want to wait about 40 minutes before starting the task so we've got a three hour task. I've worked out the best time to start is about one o'clock. Okay we've got a couple of good pilots underneath me. Brett and Jace, JS3 and Aventus 3. It's always good when they're underneath you. These nice clouds are being formed by the lake breeze onto our left, and this is the edge of it. Start of the task. On our way up, we started at about 5,000 feet. That's not too bad. I was able to get a little higher on the way out, but never mind. Damn, there's all the clouds on my right here I didn't go into. Too late now. Just gonna go straight for these good climbs on the hills. And then we're just gonna head straight up the Kaimais. Uh, Southwesterly winds, Kaimais will be working. Oh, uh, yeah, we've got 9 to 14 knots of northwesterly, so that'll help a little bit to get us there. 
Tango's landing out. Well, it was a bit of a push into the clouds, but once we got there, they were working well. We managed to run some lines here. Here we are heading up towards Matamata now, our home turf. And all these, oh, they were a bit scrappy. It's hard to find really good climbs along here, but cruised along. And I actually made a mistake very shortly. I got a bit low. And I should have, you can see the cloud is looking a bit scrappy around here. And that's because the wind is pushing through from the northeast there, out to my right. And sea breeze essentially coming over the hills. Once we got to the bigger hills, it was stopping that sea breeze and we're able to get another climb. On the ridge, going good now. Got a bit low there for a minute. Yep, more we climb as we go, the better. Waterfall! Then we had a ripper ridge run, dodging paragliders. And this was good. I managed to catch up to a few people along here. Jumping over the back of uh, Tiaraha here. Wasn't much wind and good clouds, so it wasn't too rough. Just enough wind to uh, sustain us on the ridge. And then we started getting into some really good strong conditions up. Uh, here's what we call the swamp. It's actually a peak dome and this generates really nice thermals. Woo! This is going good now. Alright, we're going into the top turn point now and it's looking amazing. Then we had a ripper run south along the Kaimais again. Although I made a big mistake coming up soon. That was coming down the end here. I knew we weren't going to get good thermals and I didn't stop and climb when I should have. And that got me low here. I needed to be 2,000 feet higher up at the cloud base. See how scrappy these clouds look? I managed to find a climb but I was slow and it slowed me down. Once we got a bit further south, over, uh, well, I went over Kinleith, the uh, paper mill here. Managed to get a climb there, but it was all a bit soft. It wasn't until we got nice and south that these climbs really started uh, honking and we got a, a really nice climb at the end here. Then we had this nice line of cloud ahead, and I decided to head off track a bit to the right, get in that line of cloud, then veer left, crossing the track, and heading over to the Pyro Range, which is just on our one o'clock direction there. Nice line of clouds in here. Now the height limit here is six and a half thousand feet and this cloud is seven thousand feet so it's a dangerous situation and we actually pulled up too high and you can see I did a dive there to try and keep me out of the airspace because I suddenly realized as we went up through six and a half and I thought I'd blow in the day but luckily we have a 200 foot buffer on the airspace so I actually was a few, oh, about 10, 20 feet under the max limit where I would have got a massive penalty. Then it was just a gentle glide back to the airfield, stopping for one little climb in the blue on the way home. And we had just enough to uh, get home. And that was day four of the uh, Taupo Gliding uh, National Champs. I managed a second place on this day, which I was very happy with. And overall managed second place for the whole contest. We had a great time and uh, loved every minute of it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.